Hello everyone and welcome back. We are here in day two of the Red Hat Summit, the Cube's live coverage, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and analyst, Rob Strache. Rob, have you, I don't know if you've, have you walked the, the show floor much? I, I just did while you were doing that last interview and it, it, the energy is unbelievable. Yeah. People on the floor. So many partners and customers and it's, it's just really exciting to see a lot, of, a lot of buzz. Yeah, the ecosystem is thriving. That's what I know and I, I think open source and the openness has a lot to do with that. Well, exactly, and, and a great way to introduce our next guest. She is Frances Guida, the Director of Compute Solutions and AI at HPE. Thanks so much for, is this your first time on theCUBE, Frances? This is my first time on theCUBE, Con yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank this you. This is exciting, <laughs> it won't be your last, I can guarantee. Um, so, HPE is a long-standing partner of, of Red Hat, 25 years. Tell our viewers a little bit more about this partnership, what it's all about, and, 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 and how you collaborate together. Yeah, so I, I've been around the industry for quite some time, so I actually even remember the beginning of the HPE Red Hat partnership, and I, it's fun, phenomenal to see how it's evolved, right? It started off just, you know, we have systems that will run Red Hat Linux, but it's evolved. We have reference architectures, we have full-blown solutions that customers can buy. We're touching almost every part of how uh, Red Hat, and Red Hat obviously has expanded. Uh, we touch Ansible, so it's, it's really tremendous how we can come together to provide these complete solutions for Red Hat customers. Yeah, and I, I think, again, having been at HPE, I, I do know a little bit about the, the, the standing of the relationship, which has been for quite, quite some time. I think what's really interesting has been the explosion of AI. Uh, you guys had a great, you know, great quarter, great year. I think driven a lot, as Antonio said, by AI and things of that nature. What is it really around HPE's compute that's helping enable AI? And how does that tie in with what's going on here at Red Hat? Yeah, well, I mean, AI has been talked about in the industry for decades, but obviously it's not news, but you know, with the evolution of ChatGPT, all of a sudden it sparked the art of the possible. But the great news for HPE is that we've actually been doing AI for decades, just like everybody else, right? Just like the, the rest of the industry. We make leading supercomputers that power a lot of those foundational models that you, that you see. We have IP, like things like direct liquid cooling. Uh, we've made a number of very interesting software acquisitions. So we bring a wide set of capabilities as well as services capabilities uh, to to AI and you know, we are thrilled about the, the next decade in terms of what that is going to mean. So as you, you made the great point, that AI is not new for, for technology companies certainly, but for, for a lot of non-tech companies, it is a relatively new thing. And, and they're starting to dive in and it's intimidating and daunting and they don't want to get it wrong. Mm -hmm. They don't even know where to start. So how do you help customers think through these challenges mm -hmm. and hurdles, and, and, and what, how do you help them overcome their, their fears? Mm -hmm. Well, you see, you're absolutely right, right? So the, the AI architecture is not exactly the same as the architecture that we've used for virtualization and for cloud native. So customers do need to um, get their heads around that. The, one of the things that we've really focused very hard on is a set of purpose-built solutions that can actually take a lot of the complexity about how do you configure a system, how do you configure the network, how do you connect it, the system to the storage, what's the right software environment, and putting that all into a package that is almost, if I, would, if I would dare say, turnkey, but it's something that you can really get started uh, very quickly and you don't have to go through all of the, the work because we've done that for you. We spend months talking to an NVIDIA engineers to figure out exactly how to optimize the systems. You get the benefit, our customers get the benefit of that. Yeah, I was going to say, even Antonio recently brought up NVIDIA and talked about how uh, HPE is really focusing on building solutions to help with training, tuning, fine tuning, and even inference. And I know there's a, yep. you know, cloud to edge is really this, the, the tagline there. How, how is it really going with respect to NVIDIA and the integrations that you're doing with them? Well, we have a very 
long-standing partnership. In fact, we've been partnered with NVIDIA probably just about as long as we've been partnered with Red Hat. Um, so, uh, strong relationships there. Obviously, NVIDIA GPUs, part of our ProLiant server and part of our Cray server port portfolio. Um, we have our own AI software that we're aligning with their software. We've, uh, we're taking some of the NVIDIA switches. So we've got a very, very deep partnership. And actually, if you want to learn more about that, uh, I'd encourage you to get your tickets for HP Discover, because we're going to have uh, <laughs> Jensen Wang on stage with I was going to say, we're just about a month away from <laughs> that, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. be there, yeah. Also, Antonio on the Sphere, which uh, is going to be pretty cool Je as well. Antonio and Jensen in the Sphere. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the things that really makes all of this come to life is to hear customer stories and how, how customers are actually using these things and, and, and making their, their businesses tighter and more efficient as well as their employees' jobs in, more interesting and stimulating. Can you talk a little bit about some of the use cases for, that HPE is seeing and, and especially which industries it's, mo it's most useful in? Well, I think that's one of the phenomenal things about AI is that it is such a horizontal technology. So, you know, we see, for example, customer service. Well, any organization has customer service and AI can very, very rapidly uh, transform customer service. I've, I've had the exam, the, the the privilege of interacting with a number of customers here, and, and that's one of the things that they're you know, talking about. So um, customer service key in financial services, things like fraud detection, uh, but it, it really is, it's very horizontal technology. It's not something that's very specific to one industry or another. Yeah, I, I think one of the big things in, that we're hearing here is just the openness, and I, I know that uh, Again, HPE's been working with like Llama 2 and other different models, and I, I think, like you said, finance, we also see healthcare. We had a Boston Children's Hospital on uh, right. last night. Yep. And they were actually doing, like you said, mm -hmm. kind of the traditional AI, not the right. generative AI. But uh, one of the, I think, interesting points was that I made to them is that I'm actually, I've talked to a couple hospital systems, and they're actually using generative AI to do to do the first draft of discharge mm -hmm. papers so that the at least they're not having to spend all the time doing that. Uh, are you seeing that there's a lot of things coming together, especially with what you have with Esmeralda and all of that and how this is all being pulled together from a solutions perspective? Yeah, abs abs absolutely. I think, you know, sort of there's the, there's the proof of concept and I think, you know, a lot of enter enterprises probably at this point have started their first proofs of concept. Um, and now they're starting to think, okay, we see where this can be productive, but now we need to put in place the practices, the processes, the systems to help us scale. So that's exactly where some of our software IP, like Esmeralda Unified Analytics, some of the, um, the machine learning development environment, all of those things, um, we can really help organizations figure out Here's a great first start, but then how are you going to scale it across your, your enterprise? I mean, what you're describing is, is really change management there, because I mean, if, if customers, if, if, you're, if companies are starting to see, okay, I, I get this now, I see how we can make this, uh, make, make our people more productive, make our, make our systems run more efficiently, how do you then work with customers, really, and I, and I would imagine it's more on a human level than it is on a technology level, at very, this point. Oh, very, very, very much, right? So, I mean, I think I'm talking about sort of like the whole IT processes, but I certainly don't want to minimize the fact that, you know, a AI is going to bring a change to the role of an individual developer, the role of an individual customer support organization, the customer service representative, even, you know, I'm a knowledge worker, the role of a knowledge worker. It's great that if AI can summarize those action items for me, then I don't have to do that after I lead a meeting, right? Uh, so, you know, sort of definitely helping people work through the change. I mean, I think that's one of the, the, the things that society actually is going to need to address over the next several years. Um, I think we'll look back and we'll say, I can't believe we were doing these things without AI, uh, but it'll take a while before you know, everybody gets comfortable with that. Yeah, I, I, I agree, I think that a big piece of how this all comes together is really, again, getting the right infrastructure that is almost transparent. And I, I think, again, you know, that whole Antonio's view of edge to cloud, and really, I think he was ahead of the ahead of the curve on that. To give him credit, when he started using that, I think 
when that actually is applied, you start to look at hybrid cloud and AI. Mm -hmm. How is HPE playing with Red Hat in the hybrid cloud? Yeah, well, AI is the classic hybrid workload. So every organization that I t talk to is very conscious of the fact that they will be having some AI that they're going to run in the cloud and some AI they're going to be running either in their own data centers or all the way out at the edge. Um, one of the things that we see is that you want to do your AI inference wherever that data is. So if the data is already in the cloud, that's probably where you're going to do it. If the, you know, if you're doing AI inference all the way out at a retail location or a hospital, you're not sending that data all the way back. You, you need to process that instantly and in real time. And so um, customers will be making very evolving decisions about where to best place those workloads, and I think that plays right into the strengths of HPE with HPE GreenLake and our platform for uh, bringing the hybrid cloud, uh, bringing a, the, the cloud experience to your on-prem environment. Um, we can uh, bring a lot of value to our customers there. We talk a lot here on theCUBE about, about the future of work and the future of jobs, and, and something you had said about how knowledge workers identify themselves <laughs> and the kind of work they do and the energy that they're bringing to their jobs and, and how AI is going to change that. I'm, I was just looking at your LinkedIn. You're an econ and French major from a liberal arts college. <laughs> Same, I, I'm a Wesleyan grad. Me, you went to Williams. You got me, you um, got So I'm just so curious, as someone who has spent really her career in, in technology and, and many, year, many decades at HPE, how you think about the future of jobs and how you think about the students who are graduating today um, maybe with liberal arts degrees, and, and, and the kinds of skills you want them to, to oh. bear in their jobs, and, and what, 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 in, what, in, what industries at, at large are thinking about in terms of what they need out of their workers? Well, I'll tell you exactly what I tell my niece and nephew who are college <laughs> age, which is data. Go <laughs> take those data science courses, understand, get, de develop now that deep understanding of, of data because this is going to change your world. I can see from where I sit that this is going to change your world and you should be getting it on the ground floor right now. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to my son, he got an A. All in right. His data, in his data course this semester. Well yeah, done. He kept, kept his GPA up too, but I, I, I think. I did take one computer science <laughs> class as, my, as part of my liberal arts, so there we go. Uh, I, I, I think again, it's, I think AI is one of those leveling technologies that can help people, and 80% of people work outside their major anyways, so I, I think when you start to look at how AI can help people, and I think one of the interesting pieces, and you kind of hit on it a little bit, was that you're, when you're talking about the partnership between Red Hat and HPE, there's a lot of co-engineering that's going on into these solutions. Absolutely. And it's not just like, hey, it's just a rail box, or hey, it's just an open shift. It's a solution that you're shipping. Kind of explain a little bit more about that. Well, that's one of the things that we've been doing with Red Hat for the better part of the last decade, if not more. You know, the number of reference architectures that we have published that bring our systems, our storage together with various different Red Hat technologies, whether that's RHEL or OpenShift or, you know, sort of the, all of the various different Red Hat platforms. Um, and, you know, so, so we, we are doing that, we've been doing that in the cloud native space, uh, helping customers transform uh, from more you know, traditional applications and modernize their applications, the reference architectures, the automation that we even bring on top of our reference architectures, a big part of what we're doing um, in the cloud native space, and we are going to be doing that same thing in the AI space. Yeah, and that also ties back into Ansible and, how, and all the automation absolutely. and playbooks there as well, right? Oh, ab ab absolutely. In fact, you know, sort of taking me back uh, about 10 years ago in my career, HPE had a, infrastructure management tool uh, called OneView. And it was different from the other infrastructure management tools because we actually designed it kind of to be a API first. Nobody else at the time had anything that was for you know, managing what was going on in your physical infrastructure that was really programmable. We designed that as API first. And one of the very, very first partners that we worked with was Ansible, even before they were actually part of, of, of Red Hat uh, because customers very quickly saw the value of, oh, it's API first, all I need to do is add these Ansible playbooks into my broader data center automation practices, and I can bring some to the physical infrastructure, some of the same kind of automation that I could already bring to my virtual 
uh, infrastructure. Uh, so it's exciting to see, you know, 10, 10 years on how that, which was kind of experimental at the time, has now become really mainstream. Okay. As we wrap up, I'd love your, just your final thought. If you could future cast for a little bit, what, are, what, are, what is on tap for this year and what do you think we're, we're going to be talking about at next year's Red Hat Summit? Next year's Red Hat Summit, I think we will still be talking about AI, uh, and we will, uh, but we will be talking about the people who are really driving business productivity using AI. So it will, therefore, a subset of customers, AI is going to move out of the experimental stage, the pilot stage, into the production stage, and you know, somebody, Red Hat's going to have somebody on stage, hopefully partially, working with HPE as well, <laughs> that uh, is going to talk about how they have really made a big impact on their bottom line because of some of the things that AI is going to bring to that business. Well, we're already looking forward to it. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE, Francis. All right, thank you, great to be here. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Strecce. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Red Hat Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news. <laughs>